Okay, folks, are you ready? So we can get started. Uh, this is the talk about uh, Notary Project. This is the maintain maintainer track talk. Uh, my name is Tori Modenov. Uh, today, what we're going to talk about is uh, enabling the software supply chain ecosystem with Notary Project. So if you attended previous talks about Notary Project, it was more about the project, what the project does. Today, actually, I have uh, two of our partners. They will talk about their experience working with Notary Project and implementing functionalities on their side. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Todi Modenov. I'm a maintainer of the uh, Notary Project. Uh, and also, I work for Microsoft, and I deal with container security for the last more than, actually, two and a half years. Uh, Shooting, want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hey, everyone. This is Shooting Zhao, and I'm a Caverna maintainer and a staff engineer of uh, Nomada. So today I'm here to demo the, uh, demo the integration of between Caverna as well as uh, Notation Project. And Ivan is from uh, Venify. Yep, thank you. Uh, and so, yeah, Ivan Walls, uh, architect at, at Venify, focusing on uh, uh, software supply chain security and a lot of background in, in key management, crypto, uh, PKI, and um, really here to, to kind of give some, uh, some learning experiences um, and also demo uh, the signing part of, of this uh, integration, so. Thank you. And our agenda for today will be like first, uh, only one slide, what happened with Notary Project uh, since uh, KubeCon North America in October last year. After that, we'll go through the demos that uh, uh, Shooting and Ivan will uh, show you. Uh, and uh, at the end, we'll talk what's coming next with the uh, Notary Project. So very briefly, what happened since uh, uh, October last year. The first thing is like we really clean up the branding for Notary Project. So officially, the name is Notary Project now. And uh, the tooling uh, that we have currently available is called Notation. If you are interested, we have a full FAQ where you can read about all the terminology and what we use in the specification and so on. Uh, we also have an update of the Notary Project uh, Notation libraries as well as the CLI. So we have a revision of the first version that we released last year in August. Uh, we actually uh, recently released updates to that version with more functionalities and uh, uh, better user experience. We implemented also uh, GitHub Actions and also uh, ADO tasks that you can use, and we are working with other CI/CD tools to add more actually automation with Notary Project. And as you can see, our adopters are growing. So. Uh, not only kind of uh, uh, the big uh, uh, maintainers that are on the project, but we also have a, a lot of uh, projects looking at notary project implementation as well as customers uh, using it. So I'll hand it over to Ivan to uh, go over the uh, plugin framework, which was one of the big improvements that we did over the last couple of months. Ivan? Yep. Thank you, Tali. So I, I think, you know, in, in general, if you've already, uh, if you played with a lot of these um, enterprise tooling, one of the, I think the, the measure of, of success is the ability for these tools to have a very extensible uh, plugin framework. So I was really excited to see when, when kind of uh, the Nori project started um, you know, looking into notation um, that, you know, here's, here's a framework where we can uh, allow um, a lot of our you know, partners, ecosystem partners to be able to, to deliver kind of that, that experience for their customers. And so, um, on this particular slide, is really kind of shows the overall you know, plugin framework. Um, so obviously, we have the ability to uh, perform both the the signing, and it's really pointless to have the signing unless you can properly verify um, a lot of these uh, the, the, the software artifacts. Um, so essentially, what we have here is um, um, think of it: the, the first step is to obviously get the tooling installed. Uh, then to be able to install the, uh, a, a plugin, such as the one from, from, from AWS, from Azure Key Vault, from, from Venify. And that allows you the ability to offload, I think the most important and the critical parts uh, for the enterprise is to be able to, to, be able to sign with a, a trusted identity. And so you're, you're seeing that here with, uh, with that enterprise uh, code signing platform, which there's a lot of different solutions, including ones from, from Venify. Um, 
So we get we essentially sign that. Um, if you're already familiar with with signing uh, code signing in general, typically we take the digest of that artifact um, that pro basically provides the authenticity and the integrity around that particular artifact, and then we push that to the uh, to the registry. And at that point, um, when it comes to uh, you know what shooting is going to be showing is on the verification, right? So we have a a signed container image, and we want to run this in production. So we want to know it's coming from a trusted, um, trusted, uh, you know, uh, source. And so think of it the reverse. So we ver so the 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 system uh, wants to be able to to pull down a an image. So we pull down the uh, the signature. And I think really the the nice thing with notation is that not only does it provide the ability to sign with you know with with the plugins, but it also be able um, has the ability to extend what um, normally happens with verification, where we ver we validate the chain. We check uh, revocation. There's a timestamp, um, and so the plugin for the way that Eventify uh, implemented was uh, basically going back to the um, to a, a, that code signing solution, which is that source of record. So we know where that signing identity came from, uh, and we can also do things like timestamp checking. We can also uh, check the the status, the revocation status of a particular uh, signing identity, um, and so really. Um, kind of end-to-end, -end, right? And we'll show you here that, uh, that shortly. Um, but basically, uh, plugins can extend the verification uh, based on the, the trusted identity and revocation status. And so I think that's a, kind of a good uh, overview. Of, and, you know, I think when, when I started to, 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 to kind of see what the functionality would be, it was always, always about, you know, if you've, if you've ever built something without looking at, you know, like a, a recipe or something, right? You try to bake a cake and you're like, what is this actually supposed to look like? Um, so you have to be able to have a reference implementation. So at the time, I think, I think it was just the Azure Key Vault implementation, Go, Golang, you know, limited. I'm like, okay, how do I, there's some basic scaffolding in there. There's a, there's a somewhat of a template. Um, so that was a kind of a, an inter interesting experience. Um, I think uh, one of the things that, that we've, we've added as an additional repo is that there's a kind of a, no, uh, a notation plugin framework. So a little bit more um, consolidated. And I think also, if you've, all, if you've seen kind of the, the, the deeper um, parts of, the, of the, what the library supports, uh, of course, we have a, you know, going back to that, the analogy of, you know, building something, you need a spec. So I think you know one of the things compared to other other types of signing solutions out there um, is that a very detailed spec. So both from a signature generator. So what uh, what options do you have for being able to uh, to to serialize the data, uh, protect the payload, and then also down to um, what what about as as I mentioned in the previous slide, um, how do we verify that signature, uh, and so that allows us to to extend that into uh, enterprise code signing solutions such as the ones from Venify and, and others. Um, and I think, you know, so lessons learned there. Uh, obviously, if you're already familiar with, with um, revocation and some other checks, uh, especially in some of these production environments, there's obviously that performance trade-off. So we have to consider when we, I know there's, there's caching that can take place, um, but we need to, that, that, that kind of performance trade-off with uh, real-time verification uh, of these uh, these signing identities, so I think you know initial um, right uh, areas that uh, kind of help steer the direction of, of the project was, uh, and I know there's still some kind of ongoing things we can improve. Uh, how do we debug? How do we troubleshoot plugins? Um, and so I, initial challenges with how do we uh, create the necessary payload and how do we serialize that data, especially when it uh, when dealing with a, a certain third party solution. And as Toddy mentioned. Um, a big improvement in terms of that uh, user experience. Uh, how, do I, how do I get Notation, first of all, installed? And then how do I plug that into my environment, right? So I can start leveraging some of these, um, some of my infrastructure, uh, especially for signing. So uh, that was, a, a, so at, at that point, I think every plugin had to basically create their own documentation. Um, and then also, I think, you know, with 1.1, um, we in introduced the, the plugin management part. So, um, so with that said, we're going to kind of go to the, the demo. All right, so I had already kind of pre-recorded this one. So um, it's basically we're going to be running through 
a um, a signing example, and I, th- I know shooting is going to kind of walk through the other part of it, which is going to be that that verification um, uh, experience in the, for for Caverno. So let's go ahead and, and get that going. So the way that's so yeah, running the script um, is that the latest version of Dotation, and we're going to then at this point um, start uh, the the installation. So notice here, obviously with 1.1, uh, being able to securely download the uh, latest version of the plugin uh, from a um, your plugin repo. So that's, I think, a big improvement, right, from that experience, as I mentioned. So we can see that listed now on the developer or the build system. And then at this point, uh, if you've already played with notation, now you need to be able to start configuring, right, what uh, I'd, signing identity or certificate you're going to be using. So in this case, um, this is relative to a, a Venify type of deployment. Uh, so obviously there's some backend stuff we're not going to go into detail here, um, such as how do I, you know, uh, how do I point to that code signing service? Uh, and, and also, you know, what are some of the, the details there? So at this point, um, we're going to be running the notation sign command. So as you can see here, we're, we're referencing that uh, specific identity. Uh, and this is just a sample image that I just I put together. Um, and that's going off to the Venify service and signing that digest. And so successfully signed. And then uh, if you're familiar with notation, uh, you can run the inspect command. You can see that, um, right, all the details of what that signature is from the signed attributes all the way to that trust chain, which is going to be very important, as you'll see with the enforcement side with with policy. Um, and you can see here uh, I, it, for, for notation, obviously, it has its own kind of policy management. So as you can see here, um, we have uh, just a very, very you know, e- simple example um, with a strict signature verification. Uh, we're pinning off of a specific uh, trusted identity. Um, and then we're going to import that. And then finally, um, very simple, right? So you can imagine kind of end-to-end before this gets released, we can verify uh, the the signature against what's in the the registry. And uh, that's um, pretty much uh, for for the demo. So I'll pass it over to Shooting. All right. Thanks, Ivan. Uh, let me switch to the next slide. So next, I'll be demonstrating um, how Caverno integrates with the Notation Venify plugin to verify images within your Kubernetes cluster, right? And so we have built this uh, Nomada extension service that runs inside of your Kubernetes cluster to verify the images um, using the Notation Venify plugin that Ivan just demonstrated. So it internally embeds the plugin and it runs inside the Kubernetes cluster. And let's say now you're trying to send a request to create some workloads. That request will first reach to the API server. And if you have Caverno running in place, let's say um, here Caverno runs as an mission controller and with the Caverno policy deployed um, running in place, the mission request will be forwarded to Caverno and then Caverno parses the image data um, from that emission request and I'll forward the image data to the extension service, right? And once the extension service receives that image data, it'll use the notation uh, Venify plugin to verify the images and return that res- results back to the Caverno. And then that result is for the, uh, returned back to the API server along with the em- emission responses. And then you are able to block um, your workload if your workload is running some of the unsigned or insecure image, right? So that's basic uh, the workflow of how that works in the Kubernetes cluster and just give you a little bit more context of the extension service. Um, it it cannot be used, can not only be used to verify the image signatures, but also to verify the attestations, right? And you can also mutate the image digest for your resources on the fly. And we have introduced this caching mechanism um, into this extension service, which stores the verification outcomes, like the results of your image signatures or the attestations, 
and this is the in-memory TTL-based cache, and the cache uh, entry will be cleared out once it's once it expires, or if there's any change to your trust policies or the trust doors, right? And those are the resources that are used uh, when you do the verification with the notation CLI. And moreover to that, if you're running on a shared cluster, it is possible to configure multiple trust policies and trust doors to isolate the verification flow in the shared cluster. And, um, you know, depend on your use cases, uh, especially if you're running in a large scale, you are able to scale out the extension service by increasing the replicas so that um, the verification request will be distributed to all running instances. And you can, you know, by allocating more resources to the extension service, you are able to increase the combined throughput. So with that, let me dive into the demo. Uh, we'll see how the verification works in your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so this is the Caverna one. And, um, you know, just this, to introduce the setup here, I have a single node client cluster running. And um, with the, to verify the images, you have to install Caverna in place and also the extension service. So I'm running, uh, I'm deploying Caverna using this ham command. Um, this is the pre release. So I use that with the dash dash devil command. And after, let's wait and see, Caverno is installed. It's gonna take some time, but um, once Caverno is in place, um, it'll be, you know, here, it'll be installed, um, the control, emission controller will be installed into your cluster with all the rest of the uh, controllers. And um, next, I'm gonna install the extension service. This is, you know, open source. You can fetch it from the GitHub repo. I'm installing from my local manifest, and let's verify that extension service is running in place. And then, um, you know, as I said, you have to deploy Caverno policies in order to receive those emission requests. And let's quickly inspect the Caverno policies here. So I have a cluster policy here that matching on the resource kind pod in a specific testing namespace, which is called test verify. And here, if you inspect the context entries, I have two entries here. First, it fetches the um, certificate um, so that it can send the request to the extension uh, service endpoint, right? And then the second entry here, I'm building the image variable. This is happening inside of Caverno. And then I'm doing a post call to the extension service so I can send that image data over to the extension service, and then along with the information of the trust policy. So the extension will know which trust policy to look at when I do the verification, right? And moreover to that, I'm doing a mutation, as I mentioned earlier, you can replace the image tag by the image digest that is returned um, from the extension service, right? So next, let's deploy that policy into your cluster by kubectl create 8 And then let's make sure the policy is ready. Yeah, it's now in ready status. So it means you can, um, it can be applied to your emission request. And, um, you know, this is the trust policy that Ivan has showed uh, earlier. And it's just wrapped up in a custom resource so that you can create it, create it into your Kubernetes cluster. It has the trust policy name and um, all the rest of the data, um, this is just a simple example of your trust policy. And then let's deploy that into your cluster. Again, verifies that it has been created successfully. Okay, now similarly, um, I will install the trust stores um, in, the, in the policy in, in, into the cluster. And similarly, again, let's inspect that. So it is also wrapped in the custom resource and it has the name to that trust store with the CA bundle embedded in the spec of the resource. And if you create that to the cluster, it 
and let's make sure it's created successfully. Okay, and with all those um, resources in place, you are now be able to verify the images. Let's let's use the image that um, Ivan has uh, showed, uh, has signed earlier. So I'm trying to create a pod into this newly created test Vanify namespace with the image, um, you know, the, the data from GHCR container registry. With the image tag V1, and I'm doing a server-side dry run. And what happens internally is that, you know, the mission request has been sent, the API server forwarded that to Kavernal, and then Kavernal parses the image data, send it over to the extension service, and that extension service internally leverages the notation Vanify plugin, fetches the image data, verifies the signatures, and um, has the result returned back to the Kavernal, and then um, further back to the emission to the API server. Now you can see that the pod can be created successfully because this is the signed image. And next, I'm gonna run this command again just to showcase you the caching, how the caching works, right? So if I run that command, you can see the pod is created nearly immediately, right? So the verification results has been cached um, in the extension service so that you don't need to fetch everything again and you know, with that uh, long delay when you do the verification. And similarly, if you're running an on-signed image, of course, um, it'll be blocked by Kavernal because Venify fails to, Venify plugin fails to verify the image and the request will be blocked. So you'll see that in a minute. Okay, now, so you see the message that making sure your image has been signed successfully, otherwise your uh, creation request will be blocked. Okay, with that, let me switch back to the slide. And hand over to Toddy. Uh, thank you, Shuding. Um, as you can see, so uh, we enabled ways for actually uh, to create extensions, not only on the signing side, but also on the verification side. And we are very happy to work with partners like uh, Benefi and Kiverno in order to extend uh, uh, the capabilities. So we have the core part in, in uh, uh, notation. And uh, if you have any specific needs, uh, either we can work with you to actually uh, extend it, or you can go through the documentation the same way like uh, Ivan and uh, yeah, implement it yourself. Uh, what's coming next for Notary Project? So a uh, couple of things that we are working. Um, we are working on signing and verifying arbitrary blobs, uh, which will allow us to not only actually sign uh, uh, binaries that are different from container images, but also uh, the actual binaries uh, that uh, you download for, let's say, notation or any other uh, software. Uh, we are also working uh, on this because uh, most of the time you want to sign the things before you push them to the registry. So we want to sign S-bombs, we want to sign uh, other information that's uh, related to your software before you push it to either uh, the registry or, or whenever you will use it. Um, the, uh, I think we have repetition on the slides. <laughs> uh, we are also working on timestamp uh, uh, protocol support, uh, which will be built into, uh, for example, uh, notation core, which means that the timestamp support doesn't need to be implemented, for example, in uh, the, the plugins. And one of the big things that we are working on is really integration with attestation. So we are engaging with the Intoto community, and uh, we are looking to actually add attestation signing uh, into uh, uh, notation and also work on some standard attestations that we believe will be important for the software supply chain. Uh, we have one minute and I think I can sneak in one more demo uh, inside. And this demo is actually uh, with Docker Hub. Uh, so far we've been doing our demos only with GHCR, but uh, uh, recently thanks to the efforts that Docker put, now we can push notation uh, signatures into Docker Hub. So very quickly, I, I will go through that demo.
there will be some, some repetition here just to set kind of the environment. I have a, a test repository which is in Docker Hub and uh, I am a Python uh, developer so I mostly actually use Pythons for demo. Uh, what we're going to do is we'll create a signing key. This is kind of similar to what Ivan did for the um, uh, Venify one. Uh, this test key is created and now I am signing into Docker. And the only thing that I need to do is to say notation sign signature format. And as you can see, the image is successfully signed. Uh, of course, uh, validation also works. Uh, uh, the, the uh, standard way that we do that is uh, we create the policy, uh, we pull the image, we validate it, and uh, as you can see, the policy is created specifically for the test repository which is in, in Docker Hub. So when I verify the image, again, it tells me that uh, uh, Docker IO image is verifiable. Uh, from now on, we'll be very happy that actually we'll be able to do our demos with Docker Hub. So, thank you, Docker. And uh, I believe that's everything. So, uh, we are open for any questions and please provide any feedback to the session. <laughs> any questions from the audience? I can. Uh, hey, thanks for the talk. Um, my question is about um, Caverno with the um, the Martyr extension. Um, my question is, um, do you, do you support um, like a MTLS connection between um, Caverno and the like the the extension service? Um, and is that easily configurable? And how do you how do you achieve that? Yes. So um, let me switch back to if I can. Uh, to the Caverna policy, I have two complex contact entry defined in the policy itself. And the first one, I don't know if you have noticed that. Okay, I think this is the one. Right, this um, the first contact name TLS certs. It actually fetch the certificate from the secrets that is created by the extension service, and then use that to forward uh, to be able to post requests to the extension service. Okay, cool. Sorry, I missed that. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? What about performance? Performance. For? Or for the mechanism itself. Well, I guess we have overall performance with, um, with when signing or with uh, the- Verifying. The, the, ver the verification, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Uh, very good question. Uh, let me switch to the this slide. So at the last point, you can see we, in, uh, support high availability of this extension service and you can either like I mentioned you can scale out by increasing the replica numbers of the running instances so the ver verification request will be distributed to all the running instances or by allocating more resources to that um, you know configured instance so that you can increase the uh, throughput of the uh, the whole extension service so that is uh, supported I hope that answers your question yeah, and, and just one one note. So also, um, especially when, when when doing verifying against a third party um, identity service for the, for the for the signing certificate. So I think you know I think a good thing with with at least with this integration is the ability for it to cache. So you have the verification right. outcome. So you're not going back to check verification status, um, checking that the signing identity is in fact where it, it comes from, right? So that's another I think a good part of it. Um, hi. Uh, just a question here. Uh, it's, of buzz, it, it's about the best practice. So here in the demo, uh, you show us how to sign locally, uh, but in like a real environment, we want to sign the image inside pipelines to upload them on registry. 
However, we do not want to have those certificates available on all the projects. So do you have best practice on how to handle the, the signature part inside the pipelines? Yeah, it's a great, great question. So uh, best practices around, um, right, uh, the, the signing and um, that whole process so that you're, you're limiting the exposure of the signing certificates and keys, right? The, so, so that's exactly what we're and kind of getting into more on, on the solutioning. So at least Venify, um, so we, our, our job is to basically um, reduce, eliminate the need for a local certificate and at least the private signing key to be on the build system. So what happens with our, our integration is that we, we send the, the digest, uh, the plugin does, sends it off into the, the Venify code signing service. And that the private key is either in the Venify um, database or on a hardware security module. So this is where more enterprise side of it, yeah. And that way, yeah, once again, uh, li limiting the, 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 the compromise, the key compromise p potential. And just to add to that, like we, we uh, have the GitHub action, right? So you can get the uh, notation CLI together with, let's say, the Venify plugin in the GitHub action with very simple configuration. Uh, so you can run it inside, let's say, GitHub Actions or uh, ADO tasks. Uh, so, any other questions? Thank you. Hi. Uh, question for Notary SDK. Which programming language do you support? I can answer that. So notation right now is implemented in uh, uh, Go. Uh, we are looking for other languages to add other languages, but right now Go is the only one. Mm. Yep. Anything else? More questions? So notation strongly relies on the subject refers uh, feature of the OCS specification. Um, there are still some registries not supporting it. Do you have some workarounds or is it just completely out of scope to support them? So um, that is true. Certain registries do not support it. Like for example, as we mentioned, Docker until recently does not support, Docker Hub, I mean, until recently did not support that, but uh, they support it right now. Now that the OCI specification is actually uh, released and stable, uh, we expect actually every registry to report, uh, support it. Um, uh, we, like majority of the registries, uh, support uh, one or the other way of actually doing referrers. So there is a, a backwards compatibility to OCI 1.0 that uses manifest index in order to support the referrers, or the new 1.1 OCI specification uses the referrer API. Notary supports kind of both of those and can work with each one of them. Uh, honestly, at the moment, I, it, it's escaping from my mind which of the registries do not support either one or the other. So theoretically, all major registries, you should be able to, to use it. Any more questions? Or I think we are almost at time, actually. We have one more minute. No, Tom, no? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you.